Good evening, I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Mary Kissel, the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal and the host of Opinion Journal is here with me. Mary, this evening we are going to look immediately at New York because of events of these last hours, not just the attacks in Syria that has brought the United States again to the edge of watching threat analysis, but also because the Prime Minister, the new Prime Minister of Iraq, today in these last hours said that Iraq had interrupted a terror threat against subways in Paris and the United States, we presume immediately directed at New York. You and I both ride the subways, Mary, and the sense of threat is hard to realize because it's been many years since New York has been hit. There was an attempt in 2010 that was interrupted because of the failure of the killer, the, ma the would-be mass murderer, to ignite the bombs. However, for 14 years, New York has been a hard target, and Commissioner Kelly and now Commissioner Bratton have defended us. But tonight, we have reason to believe that we have to educate a whole new audience. Mary, you were not here in 2001. You ride the subways now. Do you, after today's revelation, feel safe, concerned? What do you want to know? Well, we know that there's been at least one serious attempt on New York every single year since 9-11, John. So the news today, for me at least, was not a surprise that the New York City subway station was a target. Um, but if you're going to feel safe in a big city... It has to be here in New York with its own very own intelligence services that has performed, shall we say, let's, let's give them a pat on the back, very, very, very well. Although I do have to say, John, uh, given the spread of terror, if you looked at simply the geographic spread of terror since 9-11, it's in a much larger swath of the world, and we have someone in the White House, and also, I might add, uh, in the mayoral office here in New York City, uh, that is not as intent on fighting terror as their predecessors. Which is why we're very pleased to welcome to the studio tonight, Ed Hayes, my consigliere, who brings his colleague and companion and friend for many years, Governor George Pataki of New York. Governor, a very good evening to you. John, thank you. Nice being with you. Thank you for joining because this is a moment to recover in history. Your learning on the job, 2001, September 11th, the attack on New York brought you to New York and you stayed here with Mary Jul Mayor Giuliani. My memory is you never really slept those first days. So I don't ask you to walk back in history, but this threat today, how did you hear it, Governor? How do you regard it tonight? What can you tell the people of New York? Well, I heard it the same way everyone else did, just uh, looking at the media, actually looking at my iPhone and following the news. And uh, it didn't come as a surprise to me because I think Mary hit it right on the head. New York has been a target for an effort once every year since September 11th, and we know New York is, if not these, certainly one of the highest priorities to attack of these Islamic radicals. And uh, so it didn't stun me. I think we're all aware that we have we are at risk. We're in a war with these terrorists. Uh, but one of the things I don't think people do appreciate is my sense is we are more at risk today than at any time since September 11th. Governor, has the threat also changed because everyone talks about a 9-11 style attack again, yet we're also starting to see random acts of violence. I'd note Australia just stopped a threat against having a random citizen beheaded by the Islamic State in the middle of Sydney. That's right. Are we at risk of that kind of yes, attack Yes, I here? think we are. I think we are. It's a different type of threat. The September 11th uh, attacks tragically were well planned and organized and the terrorists have been here plotting and uh, preparing for a number of months but now I think we not only continue to face that risk but the so-called lone wolf attacks because it's clear that uh, ISIS in particular has thousands of people who have the uh, ability to use legal means to get here uh, and uh, yes Australia you also saw it in England where a soldier was beheaded in the subway attack there so we are at risk not just of that type of well-planned and organized attack, but also of radical followers of these terrorist groups uh, committing those random acts of violence. I want to cover what the governor can teach us about his time f in 
office when dealing with this scale after 2001. But just a moment, f- f- so everyone can calm down a little bit. Ed, you are colleagues and friends with Bill Bratton, the police yes, commissioner of New York. Client. This is an extremely able uh, master of the police. Probably and great. replacing Ray Kelly, we lost nothing in preparation. Right. I, I still think that Bratton is the greatest figure in law enforcement probably in the history of this country has made more dramatic difference in the way that law enforcement successfully happens than anybody else. Try to think of somebody else that took uh, cities with such tremendous crime problems and basically eliminated them. Well, maybe George Kelling and uh, James Q. Wilson, the criminologists. Well, I know that, but they're not police Those chiefs. guys. No, no, they're not. They're not. And, no, and Ken Kelling's still, I guess, advising. Yeah, no, they, they made tremendous contributions. But in terms of handling men and women with guns, you can't beat Brad. I want to come to the governor now because it's my experience these years reporting since no- I was first on the air the day after the attack, Governor. I listened to you from ground zero for days after days after days. You yes. were there with the mayor every day. Uh, that New York, I've learned, is the number one target. I'd like you to underline that for the audience uh, because there are many other cities. Paris is mentioned today. What did you learn? Uh, there's no question we're the underlying target, uh, the, the top target. And uh, we were talking before we went on the air about the attacks of uh, 1993. That was the first attack, and at that point, it was uh, led by the Blind Sheik, I believe it was, or uh, and, uh, and everybody considered it just a one-time act of violence by some crazy people. We have learned since that that's not the case, and we, but we have seen since then that New York is unquestionably uh, the target that uh, Islamic terrorists would most enjoy being able to attack again, which is why it's critical that we also be the most aggressive in protecting ourselves and in developing the intel- intelligence putting in place the measures to protect us. Governor, I took a little pot shot in my introduction at New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, who the New York Post reported last week had not requested top secret security clearance right. so that right. you could get the kind of security information that Bratton has access right. to. Uh, no. Was that too low of a blow? I mean, do no, you have, I don't do you think have so at all. confidence in this guy? Uh, uh, I, I have real concerns about a mayor who can't get briefed on the top secret material that he needs to know. Uh, uh, we, Mayor Giuliani and I were constantly in confidential top secret briefings about intelligence and information that we needed to make the appropriate decisions as to how to best proactively protect the people of the city and of the state. And I, I can't sit here with any degree of confidence and say that the mayor has that level of awareness in the briefing to be able to help guide and make those right decisions. Governance question, Governor. Yes. The NYPD is a vast organization, yes, sir. and uh, it has protected New York all these years of the war. Does the mayor or the governor command the NYPD? The mayor, Who's in charge? The mayor controls uh, and, and commands the NYPD. And it's not just a vast, it's also a very talented mm-hmm. pool of, of very well-trained and, and uh, the best professionals you could have. Uh, we also, at the bridges, the tunnels, the airports here in the city, have the Port Authority Police. Now, the Port Authority Police are controlled by that agency the authority and they are not under the mayor's control they're under the control indirectly of the governor through the leadership governor of the christie Board and of governor cuomo that's correct when you were in the office uh, ray kelly comes in with mayor bloomberg who's right. elected in 2001 and ray kelly develops what it was at that time i recall reporting on it uh, a very large sophisticated intelligence operation that included surveillance on the mosques one of which launched the 93 attack my understanding is that Mayor de Blasio has, has either dismissed or taken that down considerably from what it was. Is that your opinion wise, what you learned back uh, in the in early days? If in fact case? that's the case, it is uh, and the, totally the wrong thing to do. Uh, Ray Kelly did put in place this tremendous uh, network to develop intelligence. And the goal here is not to minimize the damage after an attack has been made. It's to prevent an attack in the first place. And to do that, you need the best possible intelligence you can gather as quickly as you can gather it. And if, in fact, that intelligence gathering operation has been even partially dismantled, when we face this risk, it is clearly uh, the wrong decision for the safety of the people of this city. Governor, what happens if, God forbid, there is some sort of attack in Grand Central or or Times Square or, you know, down on Wall Street? 
What's the reaction? Well, what we, happens to New York? Uh, well, we were always concerned about it. First, uh, you you want to do everything possible to prevent that from happening. Secondly, you want to have the forces right there so that they are limited in their ability to ca- carry out any significant prolonged attack. But then you, ha- you just have to continue to have confidence in our freedom. Uh, the greatest threat after personal security is that we lose our liberty, that we lose our confidence in our way of life. And I remember after September 11th, there were enormous negative economic consequences. People didn't want to come here, and that was wrong. And we had to work very hard to convince them that when we change our normal way of life, when we give up our freedom, when we're afraid to go on to a theater or on the subway, uh, we are allowing them to have a victory that they can never have. We're speaking with Governor George Pataki and Ed Hayes, my consigliere. They join us in studio tonight, the day of the threat we learned to New York City and Paris subways by the Islamic State or other takfiri jihadists. Mary Kissel, the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal and the host of Opinion Journal is here with me. When we come back, Mayor, Mayor de Blasio and Governor Cuomo have commented on this threat today. What have they said and what does it mean for rotting the subways and for being in Manhattan and the rest of New York tomorrow? I'm John Batchelor.